Hey guys, hello everyone. Once again, welcome to Rasayan Academy all of you. So we are doing 81st name reaction today. And we have already started a name reaction practice series. If you haven't already seen, please do. So there are some name reactions which are remaining. And I think that if we do it right now, it is going to help you in your name reaction practice also. So our 81st name reaction is Julia Lichgo Olipination, as you can see. And just after understanding this name reaction, we will continue to compare Julia Kochiansky olefination also. Right? Very, very important name reactions. Both of these are, they have also been asked in your examination, CSI net exam, right? So let's consider the first one, the simple, uh, simpler one, Julia Lithgo olefination. So guys, as you can see, it is a two-step reaction. You are going to get e olefin, that is your transalkene. e olefin is transalkene you are going to get from sulfones and aldehydes okay so as you can see over here i am having a sulfone i'm having a alkyl sulfone which has alpha hydrogen two alpha hydrogens are present over here okay this is the whole sulfone group right so what is a sulfone guys when the sulfur has two oxygen it is called sulfone right if you are just having this uh let's say dimethyl it's known as dimethyl sulfide if you have one double bond O, it's known as dimethyl sulfoxide. And if you have two double bond O and two methane like this, methyl groups like this, you are going to say it is dimethyl sulfone. Okay. These are the three different functional groups of sulfur. So here we are using the sulfone. Why? Because it will stabilize the negative charge very nicely. So once again, on to this alkyl sulfone, we are reacting the butyl lithium over here. What does the butyl lithium do? It's a base, it's going to remove a proton. So this proton is removed from here, right? And then it is going to attack on the aldehyde in this way, followed by the O minus getting a acyl group from the acetic anhydride. The first step is to obtain this molecule. This is an intermediate. And to this molecule, if you are providing sodium amalgam in the presence of an alcohol, it follows a radical mechanism, right? And gives you the more stable transalkene product, okay? So this is your Julia Lithgow definition, guys. Transalkene from sulfone and aldehyde. We are just going to see the mechanism in the next slide, okay? Chalo. So the mechanism is also very, very simple. The butyl lithium is just going to take away the proton, which is on the alpha carbon to the sulfone group so that it could be stabilized into the sulfonyl, right? Into the sulfone group like this. So there's your carba anion, right? You can show the resonance structure or just like this, you can understand. So this is going to attack on the aldehyde molecule, right? There is one R group over here, one R dash over here, okay? It is going to attack on this carbonyl O, uh, oxygen becomes O minus, right? This is what you have got. This first step is known as the coupling step. All right, you can use a butyl lithium base. You can use any other strong base as well. First step is a deprotonation. Second step is coupling. So you have got the coupling, a new carbon carbon bond has taken place, right? So if you know this is a very important step over here, why? You know, it is ironic that you are forming an alkene. The same thing that we are doing in the Wittig reaction. You are forming an alkene and you are supposed to eliminate something from an alkene to get an alkene but in the julia olefination you are connecting two molecules to get an alkene right the same happens in the wittig reaction you are connecting two molecules to get an alkene okay so this is a coupling reaction taking place over here you have o minus this o minus is going to attack on the acetic anhydride okay and get acylation over here see this is o minus what will happen all right, it has got acylated. You can just simply write this molecule in this way. OAC group, nothing else. This uh, becomes O minus over here and falls back. The whole group is going to leave. This whole thing is going to leave from over here. Okay, so you get RSO2AR, R dash, and this is acylated oxygen. Okay. So am I deliberately writing these R group on the transposition? Till now, there is no selectivity. 
just the selectivity is that that there are two bulky groups and they want to stay far apart from each other this is the selectivity till now but in the second step the second step is the reduction so you have got till here let's say both of these are above the plane let's say the r groups are trans now from here you are going to have the selectivity what happens is guys the sodium transfers an electron to sulfur now this sulfur is that of sulfone group okay so if the sodium is transferring an electron to the sulfur what will happen one of the bond is going to open up so if the sodium transfers an electron over here this bond is going to open up one electron falls back to sulfur ye dekho ye aa gaya radical this is your radical that you have okay now once again sodium transfers one more electron radical becomes a carba anion in this way carba anion will favor the trans elimination in this way that is these two groups if they try to stay as far apart from uh, each other as possible they will lead to e geometry that is trans geometry okay the same thing happens over here they are going to lead to trans geometry which is more favored for this intermediate okay so e olefin you are getting from the julia lithgo olefination it's a very basic reaction okay you are getting e alkene from sulfone and aldehyde it is a two step reaction first this is your intermediate second you are doing a radical reduction method to get the e alkene now the next reaction is very very important a variation of the same julia olefination it is julia kochinski olefination and it is only a one step reaction it is a one step reaction modified one pot julia olefination okay one pot means everything you are adding at uh, just at once okay not step by step addition just at once you are adding so modified one pot julia olefination to give predominantly e olefin from heteroaryl sulfone and aldehyde now here also you have the aryl sulfone okay first also you had the aryl sulfone here also you have the aryl sulfone you have the aldehyde same thing but you are not doing the reduction step that is eliminated sulfone reduction step is not required why is it not required because you have changed the aryl sulfone from a heteroaryl sulfone you have taken this heterocyclic ring over here so we are going to see in the mechanism how is this heterocyclic ring going to help you okay in eliminating the second step let's see let's say you are taking a tetrazole ring this unit is a tetrazole unit four nitrogen that's why tetraazole okay so once again you have the same aryl system and there you have two acidic protons so here you are going to take a less acidic uh, uh, less basic base why because the protons are acidic could be removed easily all right khmds followed by aldehyde addition to exactly give you the same thing right e alkene but no second step so definitely this reaction is more hassle free so we are going to see what is added and how the reaction proceeds so first of all guys that khmds is nothing but an amide all right it is 2 sime3 groups connected to nitrogen in this way all right hexamethyl disilyl amide that is your khmds molecule amide going to uh, remove this proton from here gives you a carbanion in this way right till here it's the same the carbanion attacks on the aldehyde till here it is also the same but what happens with the o minus in the previous lithgo elimination you were taking the acetic anhydride okay which uh, was being attacked by the carbonyl oxygen okay but here you don't have any external entity you are just going to do this attack over here so that the bond opens up within the same molecule you are having a possibility okay uh, yes see what just happened so in in here you have just done this attack on the carbon one of the bonds of nitrogen one of the double bond opens up onto nitrogen see this is what you have got the double bond had a negative charge so potassium is stabilizing that negative charge this is what you have got a spiro molecule you have okay now in the spiro molecule both of the r group will tend to become trans to each other you can see right over here guys these two r groups are going to become trans to each other when they cyclize 
when they cyclize they are going to become trans to each other now what happens the negative charge is going to fall back and who is going to leave absolutely the sulfonyl group is going to leave right so this group is going to leave guys this is a strange property of sulfur if i tell you how this bond is opening up it is not like carbonyl right you can actually open up this bond in this way let's say this bond is opening up onto sulfur but then the electron density can go to oxygen right this is strange property of sulfur but it is correct if you write it this way it is correct okay so see what you are writing o minus you are writing later on right so this is a good leaving group now what you are going to do is just do the hydrolysis okay this group is going to eliminate sulfur dioxide will eliminate from here and you are going to get a alcohol okay o minus or oh and the trans alkene over here so this is the selectivity plus you get a so2 molecule so2 gas eliminated from here right so less uh, hassle in this mechanism just that you have to consider a big molecule nothing else very very easy now this question has been asked in your previous years let me tell you december 2019 question the reaction that gives e2 methyl hex3 in as a major product is so if you do this elimination guys in the option number 1 you will see that this is not a thin elimination reaction peters and elimination in the presence of an acid is anti uh, anti elimination all right but this molecule is not going to give you an e alkene it is going to give you a z alkene right okay because they are already trans so if you want to rotate these bonds it is going to give you an e al uh, z alkene okay in this way Oh, sorry this should come over here this bond should come over here not over here okay it's not a trans molecule guys these two oh and simi3 are on the same side for the anti elimination of peterson uh, olefination you have to take them into on the opposite side if you do them opposite these alkyl group will come together okay if you want to understand more on this you can see a video on peterson elimination also peters and elimination you can check out right what happens in the next uh, next reaction guys h3po4 and heat so h3po4 and heat guys acid medium may e1 elimination is going to take place you have two possibilities which proton will be lost definitely this one which is going to give you a sage the alkene not a hoffman alkene so you cannot expect that you are going to get this product in this reaction absolutely not this is a minor product what about the next this is a wittig reaction going on wittig reaction gives you see this is a unstable elide what is an unstable elide an elide which does not have an electron withdrawing group to stabilize it so this will absolutely lead to a z alkene okay the fourth possibility that you see yes you have seen the tetrazole molecule and the yes two hydrogens over here lih dms this is absolutely julia kochianski olefination reaction without any doubt you can write it's going to give you the e alkene now you have done the mechanism you can draw the product by yourself very 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 important julia olefination reactions and very less they have been asked so you might expect them in the future uh, exams also they would be asked right so this last one is julia kochianski olefination reaction okay so just like this one guys you are going to have more uh, name reaction videos we have only done 82 name reactions yet and we have to complete 100 so i'm just picking out on those name reactions which have been directly asked in your exams if you have any suggestions you can give me in the comment section more videos are coming up right and if you haven't already seen the name reaction practice you have to see them otherwise there is no point in learning so many name reactions right So thank you so much everyone for watching and do subscribe to the channel if you already haven't for all the latest updates about the CSI and the examination also join the telegram group and yes also comment that how are you liking this series and is it helping you at all if yes please do comment and please share guys thank you so much we'll see you in next video